patient says, no, I've never had a surgery, and you look, you're like, oh, yes, you have. <laughs> so you're looking for any scars, any huge pulsatile masses. A lot of times you can see the abdominal aorta pulsating, and that's normal. It doesn't mean every aneurysm. You can see it slightly on him. That's fine. Any scars, any striae, any unusual moles is what you're looking for with inspection. Symmetry and contour, generally flat. Surface characteristics, any, like if you have a lot of veins, like liver stuff, um, is what you're looking for. So the next thing we do, I'll just use this old one, that's okay, um, is auscultate. Why? Because we don't want to disrupt any bowel sounds. So I'm just, we all know how to auscultate the four quadrants. Um, then you probably don't, don't normally auscultate um, the arteries, right? So actually, let me have you, can you just sit up real quick? This is the, the pattern you want. You want to use the bell, and you want to do the, um, generally, maybe, here's the xiphoid. A couple inches below, you want to get the, for the abdominal aorta. Just want to listen for any breweries. All you'll really hear is bowel sounds, but you're listening for the swoosh of a brewery. Renal, you just take your best guess. Probably like right, the ribs end here. So just slightly below that, you're going to guesstimate where the renal artery is. Listening for brewery and then probably equidistant below the abdomen, your iliac. <laughs> so he'd be laying down, I'm just showing you for purposes of class. So five spots, okay? Aortic, renal, iliac. This femoral. Renal and femoral. And you can do femoral. Is this say iliac at all? No, no. this is femoral. Femoral, you know where femoral are? You yeah. would ask, I do iliac, honestly. Um, that's what I would do. Let me see, where is that? Uh, auscultation, renal and femoral. You can add in femoral if you want, but add iliac in there. I don't auscultate for liver and spleen friction rubs. Um, I've never done that. Um, so I, I, I'm not gonna demonstrate that. Okay, let's percuss. Let me have you lay down. So a general percussion. Um, there's kind of a pattern in the book. It kind of goes zigzag all over the belly. Um, what, what I want you to look at today is the gastric bubble. See if you can find the gastric bubble, which is usually in the left upper quadrant. But see if you can notice the difference in sound. So percussing, I use this finger only and then quick flick of the wrist. Okay, so you hear the, remember? Yeah. Ascending, transverse, descending colon. So stool's backed up on the left side, ready to come out. So you're generally gonna get a duller thing here and more resonance here. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Yeah, today. A lot of pediatrics visits are stool backed up and left quadrant abdominal pain, a lot. Because kids play, they're playing their video games, they don't wanna go to the bathroom. So let's see if we can hear the difference. What happened to Hallie too? Who? happened to Hallie. I saved my game. Hear the difference? I don't know. So his mm -hmm. bubble, more symphony here. Dole are there. Hear the difference? Yeah. It's very subtle. Yeah. No. No? He'll get good at it. You will. Here's bone. Dull flatness. Flat. Okay, so try and find the gastric bubble. Um, palpate, let's see, auscultate, percuss. Okay, liver spin is really hard to percuss, but I'm gonna show you how. We don't percuss the spleen, take that off, and you got the gastric bubble. Okay, so what's a normal liver span? Anybody know? Six to 12 centimeters. So you need a measuring tape, and you're supposed to have a pen, but I'll just kind of mark it. So that's why I see I wanted a man for this, because it's just so much easier. So I'm gonna <coughs> percuss from resonant to dull, so I get resonant to dull, I'm gonna mark it, and then I'm gonna percuss down from resonant to dull, and I'm gonna measure them. I'm gonna start with the easy part. Okay, so I'd mark um, right there. I'm doing mid-clavicular line, okay? I'm gonna try and measure the, the liver. This is the middle part of the liver. The liver goes like this, right? So I'm getting the middle part of the liver, so I've got right there, maybe I'll just have you put your hand right there. Yeah. And then I'm going to go intercostal spaces, so you get the lungs and the, not the bone, and I'm going to go resonant to dull. There we go. And I'm going to measure these two 
spots and you have a liver span of nine centimeters. Mm. So six to 12 is normal. So I'm getting the liver here. I also, you know, you can let go, thank you. I mean, um, you also, you know, if you percuss and you're starting down here, then you're gonna start low enough so that they do have hepatosplenomegaly that you're getting the lower end. You don't have the reflex. You don't have to do the reflex, but if you um, do this, the T10-11 should be like, you're not ticklish, are you? I'm about to right now. <laughs> uh, I'm holding it in. You don't have to do reflexes, I was just trying to. Um, palpation, light palpation and deep palpation. Um, okay, so I do hand over hand for my palpation. Light, look at their face always because they might be stoic and not, I just heard this. And I go um, in a pattern. You can go um, far from the umbilicus and then a little bit closer to the umbilicus. I do hand over hand. There's other techniques. You can do one-handed. But I'm feeling for any masses or lumps or bumps. And then you go deep palpation. I won't hurt you. Okay. So that's just um, much deeper than like on the stool area. Uh, yeah, you feel it? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you can palpate inguinal nodes if you want, you know where they are in the femoral area, you'd be looking for any left nodes. Okay, now I'm going to palpate your liver. Okay, so this is how you do the liver. You place your hand where the liver's edge might be at the ribs. <coughs> when they breathe in, what does the diaphragm do? When a patient breathes in, where does the diaphragm go? Down. Right, so it might push the liver into your finger. So you put pressure. They breathe in and see if you can feel that edge of the liver popping up. I put my hand here behind the patient. Put breathe in. And I do not feel the edge of the liver at all. You can let it go in my hand. But you start by pushing in. Breathe in. And then you uh, get. So I'm going to do the spleen. Same way. Put my hand behind here. Push down. Breathe in. Good. I do not feel any edge of liver or spleen. But you have to have them breathe so that the diaphragm pushes it into your hand if possible. Okay. Um, kidneys. So while you're there, I have my hand, I had my hand over here like this, right? So I'm just gonna scoot down just a skosh and see if you can block just a skosh. Oh yeah. <laughs> block the kidney. So you're gonna push up back here, you can relax. Push up here and try and palpate a kidney. Do you ever wanna feel a kidney? No. You really don't. They say on a very thin young female, you might be able to feel the right hole. But um, I'm trying to push up and push down at the same time, generally where the kidneys are, and I do not feel anything. So you do liver, spleen, kidney, kidney. Now we're going to do some special tests. While I'm here, I'm going to show you all the appendicitis and then the Murphy sign. Let's start with Murphy sign because I'm here. So what is Murphy sign test for? Cholecystitis. Murphy sign, uh, we had lecture on this, is abrupt cessation of inspiration on deep palpation. So they, I'm going to have him take a breath out and a big breath in. And if he stops breathing while I push, then that's cessation of inspiration. If he can keep breathing in, it's negative. So I'll go ahead and breathe out. But you don't start in like you do the liver. You actually just get your hand ready. Same position you go as the liver. Breathe out. Take a big breath in. Yeah, dude, is that fake or is that real? That was fake. Okay. <laughs> Did you see how I stopped breathing? Okay, now do it like it's negative. Breathe out. Kept breathing, so it's negative. If I do a, a quick push in, okay, that's the Murphy sign. You have to do that to work up. The alternate for the not for the Murphy, but for the liver, if you can hook back here mm -hmm. and I breathe in. But my nails are too long for that. That doesn't work for me. So Murphy's is quick push in while they're breathing in and see if they keep breathing in or not. Okay, uh, what's roving rosing sign? Anybody know? For really not appendicitis. These are the next four tests are for appendicitis. Uh, rebound is one of them. Rosings is when I push on the left, but it hurts on the right. Mm -hmm. Like it's roving. Pain's roving. Oh, I think it is. Okay. Rebound tenderness is what? Mm -hmm. And where do you do the rebound tenderness? Right. At McBurney's point. So what's McBurney's point? Iliac crest to umbilicus. 
McBurney's Point is a third of the way from the Iliac Crest to the Umbilicus. That's McBurney's Point. That's where it should hurt for um, appendicitis. So when would it hurt if I'm doing rebound tenderness? When I let go. So I'm going to push down. child by having him jump up and down or skip. And if they can, then it's negative because it's peritoneal irritation. Okay. Rosing. Um, it's like, sorry, because all the nerve pathways are crossed so much. In your head. <laughs> Rose, rosing. 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 I think of it as rose, but it's rosing. Yeah. It's because of all the pathways that are crossed so much. There's two ways to do the psoas muscle. You can simply have them raise their leg against pressure. That's one way to do it. The other way is to lay on your left lightly. And if your leg's straight, and I'm just simply going to move his leg back. It irritates the psoas muscle. Say that. No. <laughs> yeah, that's the psoas. Okay. And then what is the um, um, psoas and obturator? What's the obturator sign in may know? Bend the knee, good. So I'm, let me do all the work, and then I'm going to bend it and rotate it, and that would irritate the um, psoas muscle as well. So that's a negative obturator test. If that was positive, what would that indicate? It just they couldn't tolerate it. Oh. And these are all appendicitis. Oh. The Rosvings, rebound, psoas, obturator are oh, all see. appendicitis. Okay. And we should do all of them? Uh, um, what happens if it's like positive? We keep going. No, if you get, make sure. yeah, <laughs> you just need enough to justify where you're doing the CT scan, oh, okay. and you would have it with your history. Oh, okay. So yeah. you back on to that. If yeah. the patient has severe abdominal guarding, or they just are refusing part of the exam, are you just gonna try to do your best, like? If you do your best, I mean, you would just do light palpation. You would do a rebound tenderness. Um, you would just do it all very tenderly, gingerly, and um, or you say unable to do so as an operator due to severe pain. And document That's what I would do. Okay. It's showing that you wanted to do it but you couldn't. That's what I would do. And then the, the next one is cutaneous hypersensitivity, which is simply just touching hurts because of underlying inflammation. That's cutaneous hypersensitivity. It can not only be an appendicitis but other underlying conditions with inflammation. Okay, I think that's actually uh, uh, abdominal hernias. We've all seen those. Um, if you just simply lift your head up right now, lift your head. Lift your head. Sometimes you get that um, diastasis recti, which is not a true hernia. Pregnant women get it where the abdominal wall is just a little bit um, weak, and you see some protrusion, but that's not a true hernia. Most people find their own abdominal hernias, so um, I think most of us have seen those. Okay, that's it. That's a quick overview. Um, yes. Would you mind doing diaphragmatic excursion since you have the model there? Oh, for lungs? Yeah. Yeah. Because I was, yeah. I'm still not confident. Yet. Okay, here. Turn around. This is for lungs if you're worried about COPD. Do you mind if I lift up your shirt? Does that bother you? Try again. Okay, relax. Okay, so diaphragmatic excursion is the excursion of the diaphragm. Can I borrow a pen? Do you mind if I mark on you? So you're looking for the excursion of the diaphragm. So when he breathes out, where's the diaphragm? Up. Right, so I'm gonna start with him breathing out and up, and then I'm gonna have a big breath in, and I'm gonna measure how much it moves. So big breath in and let it out and hold it. We're cussing for resonant to dull. Hear that? Change, but right there. Okay, breathe, normal. Okay, and then take a big breath in and hold it when you're ready. Okay, okay, breathe normal. Okay, other side. Okay, take a mm -hmm. big breath out when you're ready. Hold in and out and hold it. So normal is um, three to five centimeters up to seven on a well-conditioned male. And 
you are six and and seven. So, uh, so you go resonant to dull and then resonant to dull with the breathing. That's diaphragmatic. So the second time when you start palpating, you actually start you, above yes, the first mark. so that you get a okay. nice resonance. Uh huh. Yeah. Thank That's you. Excursion. Yes, no problem. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have multiples. I guess you probably.